Hello, welcome to Chapter 3 Podcast, the show for readers of science fiction, fantasy, and romance. This is Season 2, Episode 26. Today, me and Izzy are here to talk about the new Vampire Academy show on Peacock and also talk about the first book in the series, which we read for this, so we're going to... It's going to be a good time. Um, So for those who aren't familiar, (laughs) the original, the first Vampire Academy book came out back in 2009, if I'm not mistaken. Seven. 2007. 2007. 2007. Okay, wow. Okay, so yeah. Two, that sounds about right. So it came back out back in 2007. There was a movie that nobody really liked very much. And now Peacock has picked it up to turn into a television series. And the first four episodes are currently out as we are recording this. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I think there. it's really interesting. I feel like there's a lot to talk about and I'm excited there about is. it. Yeah, uh, I agree. So I had thought... And, the, and I didn't tell you this earlier because I was waiting, but um, I had thought that I had never read any of the Vampire Academy uh-huh. books. But when I started reading it, I realized, oh, no, I did read the first one. I just never kept going with the series. I also read the first one and never continued with the series. I did read it in like 2011. Mm-hmm. So I didn't remember it. <laughs> I was, I was like, surprised at how huh. much I remembered because I read – I think what happened was I picked up the spinoff series – first and okay. I really liked it a lot and then I was like well let me try <laughs> the earlier series and I was like mm, no because the spinoff the characters are older it I think holds up a little bit better um you know it's hard I, I we have learned this lesson it is hard to go back and read things like pre-2010 yeah like there are certain things I can revisit like historical romances and older romance books and like it's fine because like I can view them as a point in time. Mm-hmm. Why a I struggle to view as like a point in time thing though. In the mm-hmm. same way, if that makes sense. <clears throat> well, I do sure. think it's it's interesting to contrast because I think occasionally you do get books that hold up well, and it's what's so interesting to me is that a book that came out right around the same time as the first mm-hmm. Vampire Academy book that does hold up is Graceling by Kristen Kishore, which I did just read for this the first time. And it's great. And it's interesting that they came out at the same time, but we're so different in terms of longevity, I guess. I mean, people still like the Vampire Academy series. They do really well. People are people love it. Massive fans of the series. I of course after we watched the show, like had to go read people's like opinions on the show. (laughs) Um, but I just think it's interesting because like I'm like trying to think of what other 2007 YA fiction specifically Mm -hmm. in that in that age group I think holds up and I'm like I don't know of a lot but you are right Graceling is one yeah and that's like weird to think about sometimes like does you know YA also like very much you know rides waves of trends so like when the YA vampire trend happens again well it kind of already did but you know what I'm saying yeah (laughs) but like if it happened again like I could see this book also being popular still Oh, for sure. Well, and I think that I get why it's so popular because it's pretty easy to read. I think there's a lot of drama. It's it's a fun world. But oh my God, like reading it as a woman in my mid 30s, like I could yeah. not. Yes. I could not with Rose and Dimitri. I was so uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortable. And so the first time I read it, I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I I wasn't as quick to identify or as well versed slash was still dealing with the things of being like hit on by men because I thought I was 18 still. And those sort of gross things, you know what I mean? Where you're like, that's weird that you're like only interested because you think I'm 18, not Mm -hmm. that I'm 21. Um, Like I hadn't like unpacked that in my life yet. (laughs) Mm-hmm. whereas now in my 30s married for you know 12 years and things like that I'm like oh yeah oh this is this is gross yeah and it's not the same as like it doesn't gross me out as much when it's like a vampire that was frozen at that age like and same an same and sense. some people are more creeped out by that but I'm just like maybe their brain was just frozen I feel like age. their brain is frozen at the age they're turning <laughs> 
that's my excuse. But like, yeah. I don't know. I it's just like I was like, this is uncomfortable. Yeah. I was like, she I is a minor. Is he's twenty. Guys he's twenty five. Like it's I had a guys big that were age gap. Twenty five hitting on me when I was. Yeah. Like, no. I mean, 15, I I you know? did too, like, and it's disturbing. Like, I'd be like it's like yeah, and as you get, like when you're that age, you're like, oh, cool, and then now I'm like, no, no, <laughs> red yeah. flag. Well, I think that's what is so harmful about it is that for when you're the the person who is younger Mm -hmm. you take it as oh I must be so mature and so Mm -hmm. great that they would like me but then from the other side you realize no they're just being predators and they're feeding you that line so that you don't realize what they're Mm -hmm. really doing and there yeah it is so bizarre to me Mm -hmm. because I think once I was on the other side of it I was like I don't understand. There's no way I would ever <laughs> have been interested in somebody I that much younger or someone still in high school. Dating a guy who was like 20. Like I don't, oh, I God, don't no. like I don't know how. No. I yeah. don't so I don't understand how men would want to I, date a girl that's 20 at our age. I, I don't it boggles my mind. I don't understand it either. I kind of feel like you must just want somebody who's easy to control and manipulate because they don't mm-hmm. have a lot of life experience. That's what I – and I have literally heard men say that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm like, I just – I feel like there's something <laughs> – like, I, th- I think there are – maybe occasionally one-off situations where there's a big age gap and the people genuinely just fall for each other and somehow it works like maybe yeah. every once in a while may, not when they're a minor like that's not no yeah but like well I always but, um my rule of thumb is once you're over the age of like mid-30s like once mm-hmm. you get into that range if it's an older age gap like that and like somebody's in their 40s I think you have more in common at that point in life yeah. than you do when you're in your 20s and someone's in their 40s it's so or they're different. in their 30s you know what I mean like I, and it's weird to say, like, I know people that are younger are probably like, no, that, and it's like, no, like, so much changes in your mm-hmm. 30s. Yeah. But like I said, I can I can see the the age gap working more like a 35-year-old and a 50-year-old even. Like, you're just in similar spots more likely than you are at 20 or yeah. 22 or 16 and 25. Oh, my God. Which is what we have in Vampire Cat. And all of this reminds me of, have you seen the things lately about Leonardo DiCaprio? Yes. And how he has never dated a woman over 25. He's Except almost for right 50 now. now. Except for right now. He's dating one person who's like 27. Oh. Is he, I don't. Breaking somebody, the trends. Uh, I think it's a Did PR he do it because people made such a thing of it? Mm-hmm. I think so. <laughs> but yeah, agreed. It's, it's weird. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I That yeah. threw me so hard because I do, did not remember their age gap when I read it the first time. Yeah. I, I think... I remember just not really liking this the first time I read it. I think I found the characters a little immature and just wasn't as into it as I was the spinoff series. But this time around reading it, I was cringing so much at all of the interactions they have that are supposed to be like romantic or hot. And I'm like, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. On top of the intense intense i'm not like other girls pick me energy in this book (laughs) i was just like this is i'm I'm uncomfortable it's a lot it is a lot um yeah well and i think the thing that i like maybe the most about the book and i think has been translated really well to the show better personally which we're going to talk about the show uh but i think one thing people a lot of people like about it is the friendship between Rose and Lissa, which I agree. Yes. I like to see strong female friendship. I think they're doing a better job with their friendship in the show than they did I in agree. the book. Because some of the nastiness that happens in the book that I think would really devastate a friendship isn't happening in the show. Agreed. Which Agreed. I think it's a and I choice. think the first book, like, I don't know about you, but like reading the first book, I was like, I thought more would happen. Yeah. Not much happens. No, it's kind of a quiet story in a yeah. weird way. I feel like, like it's mostly quiet. just mean girl drama. I mean, that's mm-hmm. kind of what it feels like. I don't know. And I, because I never continued with the series, I'm curious how many of the bigger plot points um, in the show show up later in the book series, because the show is quite different from book one. So what I was reading is that basically the first the episodes we just watched are like books one through four, uh, three, oh. at the very least. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 
So they're really like they have literally pulled like the threads. Um, I think what they're doing is they're taking like the overarching story and like pulling it into season one as much as they can. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. Well, and I think so. I, I mean, clearly, like I think both of us enjoyed the show a lot more. <laughs> a yeah. Lot more oh yeah. The book, and it's it's interesting. I like the changes they seem to be making. I. There seems to be a lot of con. I haven't looked too hard at pe- what people are saying because mm-hmm. I feel like it's just going to make me mad. But I like I know some people are really upset about the casting. Of course, always because anytime we get diversity in casting, people like to be in their feelings I'm about with it. The I love the casting. I think it's I excellent. Think they did a really good job. I agree. Um, when I looked at the casting for the movie, like I saw some clips of Dimitri in the movie, I was like, he's creepy. <laughs> uh, agreed. I feel like at least in the show, I can pretend like, well, he is attractive. <laughs> well, the other good thing is apparently the showrunner said that for the show, they aged her up. She's 18. Okay. So, I thought she was, but I yeah. wasn't sure. Yeah, no, they, they, the showrunner specifically said they didn't okay. want to depict a relationship between an adult and a minor. So mm-hmm. in the show, she is 18. Okay. Um, well, that also makes sense of how explicit the show is. I did yeah. not expect I don't know about you, but I did not expect Bridgerton, but like first episode. Well, and I think that really gives us a hint at what to expect going forward. It's like a like, oh, that's what the show is. Okay. Like I was expecting like a CW-esque teen show. Yeah. Not like full on ass. No, (laughs) yeah. But uh, the funny thing is, is it feels, it does feel like a CW show in terms of the level of drama and the sort of like visual, like visually and in terms of plot, it has the vibe of a CW show to me, but a little more mature. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Like I said, I just was, I was startled. Yeah. And I was also, were you super confused when the show opened? Because I was very confused. Uh, at first I was like, what's going on? And then I figured out, oh, okay, they're they're giving us like before. what happened before. Because yeah. I think that's the thing is the book begins and they changed a lot of that, right? Like mm-hmm. the book begins where Rose and Lissa had been on the run for two years yeah. and have just been brought back from the, the human world or like years after this car accident had happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas the show, we see the car accident and they're like, they go out of bounds for like a day, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. they're not in the human world. Like that, that was interesting. It was like, I just, it threw me because I was like, wait, she doesn't have family. <laughs> like I literally went, she doesn't have family. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead yeah. and then they died I was like oh, oh you're yeah. you're not thinking about the fact that they show you before and I was like I just it hadn't clicked in my head so yeah. I was very confused um I thought it was interesting too like you know the book how we open they're on the run and all that and like we don't really get hints of her being shadow kissed mm-hmm. in the book early on necessarily um Rose that is and I feel like in the show, we kind of start seeing like weird things all, like pretty quickly about Lissa's abilities. Yeah. And I liked how fast that happened. And like we kind of quickly like tied it into her being to Rosa being shadow kissed. Yeah. One thing that I was thinking is interesting about the show, though, is that while in the books, um, what, what is like compulsion is a thing that's known mm-hmm. that people can do mm-hmm. you're just not supposed to but people yeah. can sense it if you do it whereas yeah. in the show that's not the case they're making yeah. compulsion part of this using spirit ability and it's not a thing people do it's like a tab not just a taboo but a thing that is hushed up that it even exists yeah this is yeah i found that interesting too it was kind of like i don't know I'm very, I'm still very thrown at how much they pulled in from other books. It seems I was like, "Dang, we should have read five books." I know. Well, it kind of, it kind of makes me want to read the rest of the series, even though I didn't really enjoy the first book that much. Just, but just for context, I kind of want to know more of what happened. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one that had the urge. And then I saw the waitlist on the library, and I said, "No, thank you. I'm not paying for these." (laughs) Oh man. Probably because the show just came out. So Oh, I'm sure. It's fine. Yeah. I just was like, mm, no, we're not paying for that. Yeah. I like the audiobooks, I think, would be the way to go for so it. So I did listen, and I will say I do think it was an easier listen, 
than I if do. I would have read it with my eyes. Like, I don't think I, w- I think I would have shown up and been like, so I didn't finish the book. And yeah. Be like, really? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Not. No, I listened to the audiobook too. And I think that was probably a good choice. I just, I the age gap thing is so disturbing to me I also really like and again I don't know if this is in the books later but I like that they're setting up a love triangle for Rose with um the other guy who's what is his name I can't think of it now Mason Mason yeah well apparently in one of the books not long after he dies because so okay so I use this app called tv time where you can like track what shows you've watched and so I was doing that and I read the comments <laughs> because I was like, what are people saying? Like, I'm just yeah. curious, you know, a lot of racism, of course. But then some people were just like, you know, we just sped through books one through three. <laughs> and then somebody on the mate in the, on episode four. Yeah. Is that when she turns them in? Like, cause they're off prop. They went off campus and like, the uh, shows up. I, I think that's right. I think that was four. I think that, that was, was three four. or four. Yeah. Um, that they were like, wow, uh, I was very concerned because I know what happens to Mason in the books. And I was like, what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so. Wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. I I got to say, like, the casting, though, agree. There's, there's this, I, I feel like, a lot of racism with this. But I love that. I like that we're also getting queer representation. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited for that. We've got, like, a brewing sapphic romance. We've got, like, two black men in a long-term mm-hmm. relationship. I'm like, this is great. This is yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, which Although was not the in Victor, the book. Like, is terrible in book one, and yeah. in this in the show so far, he's not been as terrible. No, he's he's well, he's pretty great. Um, but I I feel like they're doing things differently, which I don't mind. Yeah, I like don't at either. all. I just think it's interesting because, like, mm-hmm. I just felt like I was like, where's all of these things from book one? Oh yeah, you know the dead animals. Victor trying to use her to live. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're not there yet. I mean, we kind of got some hints at it, I feel like, that Victor is ill. Yes. He definitely, he has some kind of a, a family illness thing. But his daughter, we know, healed him that one time, even though she's not supposed to. So that, I think, is an interesting dynamic, the way that they're setting it up. There's a lot more political intrigue going on in this. And one change that I really liked that they made is that... Christian is a forbidden love interest for political reasons, and it's not Rose getting in between them. Agreed. I did like I th- that. I thought that was a good choice. I also thought it was interesting that, like, the entire, like, royalty and all that basically are at the school, mm-hmm. which is not the case in the book at all. No. But I thought yeah. that was interesting to have everyone kind of stationed there in a weird way. Yeah. It, well, and then the other piece of it, which I don't know, again, because I didn't – I haven't read all the books – but the way they're doing the communes, do you know, is that a thing in the book? Because that's really interesting that damn fear women are, if they're not guardians, forced to. Yeah, read. I have no idea. I have no idea. I didn't see anything about that in the. Like, like I, I, I don't, scrolling. I don't think it is from, from what I know. Up? I think it would have. Yeah. So I don't think that that's. Well, I am that there are women in the book who are damn fear women who are called like blood whores where they will let men sort of drink their blood and have sex with them and that's like really taboo and like looked down upon but I don't think it's a thing where they're forced to do it it seems more like a survival thing more than whereas this feels more like the handmaid's tale type yeah it felt it feels it's weird it doesn't feel as much like survival oh did you okay so they have the feeding room right yeah I love the old lady in the feeding Yes, room. I do too. She's I great. was like, this is so funny. Like, it was so fun. Like, I was like, this is so true, though. Like, I want the story about the people who are in the feeding rooms and hear all the, the, the shit. Like, they know yes. everything that's going down. Oh, yeah. Um, whether they want to or not. And, like, I want that book. Like, give me the gossip <laughs> of the feeding room people who hear and learn about everyone's business. Because I just thought it was so sweet when she was, like, talking to Christian about it. Oh, yeah. I was like, this is very sweet. I like this. I liked it, too. It was really nice. I... I feel like I probably vaguely know some spoilers for the Vampire Academy series because the spinoff series I read is set in the future, like, later later on. But it's been a while since I read them, so I don't remember Mm -hmm. everything that happens. Um, 
but I'm liking the world. I think episode one does a lot of work to set up the world Agreed. and the characters, and they did such a good job using visual cues to to give us a lot of information. Mm -hmm. They did. I agree. Um, and it, I mean, it's beautiful. Like it is it's beautiful. beautifully shot and like done. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't. So the lady that did this did like the shadow hunter stuff. I think oh, too. Okay. And some of the other YA things. So people like don't like her. But I feel like this one so far, at least, they've done like a good enough job that I'm, I'm happy. I mean, again, we haven't read all the books, so yeah. Maybe there's something about it that we would hate if we had. <laughs> so but, far, like, I'm liking it, and the places where it's diverging, I think they're yeah. making better choices with the with the the script. There are a couple things that are a little. Um, I don't know. Some of the costuming choices later on are a little okay. weird. I was also having issues with some of the costuming choices. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not alone on this. Like, I, I really liked them confused. in the first episode. And then, like, the further we've gotten in, the more I'm like, this is... Well, like, why are we wearing a bustle? Well, why like, are we wearing why are we rough. wearing ruffs and top hats? Like that we're too. mixing time periods a lot. And, and then why way. are the the damn fear women in the communes dressed like from the 1940s? <laughs> like they look like World War II. I'm like, it what is weird. happening? This is so strange. Well, and I like when the first episode, I was like, why are they in like a bustle? Like her butt was moving weird, and I was like, oh my god, that's a bustle. <laughs> what is going on? And I was like, you know, I, I get it. Like, I also understand, like, um, the idea that vampires would, like, wear different fashions because, yeah. like, they came from different time periods. But, like... But these ones didn't. Most of they, they didn't. Live, I mean, they do modern. live longer than humans. Like, the queen is, like, 200. But they're... Most of them, they're not immortal. Like, we're showing the youth. Why are the youth... <laughs> yeah. Like, in, like, historical dresses. <laughs> Well, but then the damn well, fears modern. wear like well, but it's weird because like the damn fears wear like you know more modern looking mm -hmm. exercise attire mostly. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a strange well, I was confused too that because at one point Dimitri's in like loose sweatpants running, and I was like, why would you train in pants that loose? <laughs> like it just seemed like a hazard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like it threw me. Yeah. And then they're like in the bomber jackets, and I'm like, okay, so this is like you know 80s and up like more modern yeah looking. and then we cut to like neck ruffles and i'm like it's weird doing? well it's like the royals wear like these old fashions well and we also mm -hmm. have what's his name that creepy jesse where mm -hmm. i mean he's wearing like top hats and like full mm -hmm. like victorian era men's yeah. suiting i'm like what is going on with this, with this show like it's so yeah so the costuming decisions are interesting versus yeah. rose's mom is wearing like sweats and a crop top yep. <laughs> like what i don't just i don't know yeah. i don't know what they were thinking with all of it like i said i was just like why are his pants <laughs> it's like that yeah to train in. i I mean, I know he's just like running or something, but I was just like, I feel like you would want like slightly more fitted, yeah, at the ankle stuff if you were gonna fight, yeah. Slash, we're a, a damn pure guardian person. I do feel like we're also getting more about the Strigoi already in within mm -hmm. four episodes than we got in book one at all. Yeah, which is interesting. I wasn't expecting some of the really disturbing, like horrorish moments of like yeah, people's jaws and stuff. I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah, I it those threw me as well. I was yeah. startled. I was like, oh, I did not. And now, now I'm good because I know it's going to happen. But I was like, wait, what? Again, same thing with the butt. I was like, wait, <laughs> what? Because I thought it was, like I said, like a teen CW show. Like, we mm -hmm. wouldn't really see that stuff. And I was like, no, we're going actually, like, I feel like we're aging it up for, like, the oh, yeah. now adults that read these. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's what it feels like to me. It mm -hmm. feels more mature. Uh, and I think they're trying to nod at the fact that that the um, some of the trainees are older because they're about – they're a few months from graduation. Mm -hmm. And they're calling the 16-year-olds toddlers and how, mm -hmm. like, controversial it is. This, because isn't – she's, like, 16. In the book, yeah. <laughs> In the book. Yeah. So I like that they're not – they're, like – cueing trying to like cue the audience into like yes we know she would be a child if she was 16 mm -hmm. she's an, you know a little bit older and they're out like drinking and stuff and i don't know oh uh, one thing that i thought was an interesting contrast in the i think episode four is I, it was it was three or four where they're they're mourning the people that died was like the damn fears 
dancing that feels mm-hmm. very sort of like of the people versus the very formal dancing mm-hmm. <laughs> to more of the royals. I just thought the like the the contrast yeah. was interesting. It was. Well, it's that, you know, they have to live on their uh their pedestals, right? And be right. different than the common people. Yeah. This is a lot of, it, it feels like it's trying to do a lot with like class warfare and mm-hmm. like Agreed. kind of oppression of women and mm-hmm. which I think maybe it's trying to do a little too much. Like I, I do, it does feel like they're trying to draw on the Handmaid's Tale vibes a bit and mm-hmm. I, don't I don't know. It it does feel like a lot, like they're doing a lot. They're doing a <laughs> like lot. Like as I was watching the first, I was like, so much is happening. And I was like, yeah. I'm going to forget something because yeah. there's just so much happening and there's almost in my opinion too many relationships to follow because there's the other girl who has the magic thing the same thing right can heal mm-hmm. things um and the guy she's interested in that's the damn fair he's a damn fair is he a damn fair okay i was mm-hmm. like i couldn't remember if he was or not yeah and like that whole thing's interesting and in the book that's the character who's gone who vanishes because right. she turns into a strogoi and so does right. he Right. Or no, he goes to chase her down. Yeah. He left her. Yeah. And he's going to kill her. So she doesn't have to live that way. Right. And I was like, this is interesting. Like, it's interesting. They're doing? definitely doing it differently. But then when her eyes went dark, when she mm-hmm. like revived the, I don't know. It's interesting. Like the choices they're making. I'm here for like the, we, we have the potential sort of brewing sapphic relationship mm-hmm. with a, a royal and a damn fear. So that's interesting. There's a lot of relationships going on and I think they're trying to make like Jesse is such a creep but also you feel a little bit bad for him because his dad is awful and abusive but he's still a creep (laughs) yeah no you do it's just it's yeah it's they're I mean they're they try to make pretty much everyone in some way like you're interested in them so that way when they kill everyone which which I kind of like yeah the other thing I noticed I don't know if you know picked up on this or not but I thought it was really interesting um what is her name Oh, Tatiana, Mm -hmm. the black woman who wants to be queen, who's like maneuvering for the throne. So what's interesting is, did you notice she's the woman that um, in episode one, uh, I can't, now my brain doesn't want to like think of names, (laughs) not Rose, but Lissa. Lissa. So Lissa's brother in episode mm-hmm. one met her and had sex with her at that party. Oh. Yeah. That's right. the same one. That's I didn't the realize same, that was, that was her. One. Yeah, that was her. Tati. And she was like, and he's like, what's your name? Tati. And she was like, I'm Tatiana. They had just met. And what's weird is that later on she tells Lissa, Oh, I like knew your I was I, I knew your brother. I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, you met him the night he died and had sex with him in a coat closet. Interesting. I didn't connect that that was her mm-hmm. at all. I guess because so, uh, they were like very done up for the ball. So yeah, but it's interesting. So it makes me wonder, like, what exactly she's plotting and whether she was mm-hmm. involved in like it as an assassination attempt and like, and then she met with um with Victor right before mm-hmm. he, you know, died and had to be revived. Yeah. So I don't know. she, it's an interesting ploy. Like I said, I I am like. I'm half tempted to read more because I just almost want to know where we're pulling from. Yeah. Like how many books, like, did we pull, like, did we literally take all six books and like lay out the plot? That's what I'm wondering. And like throw it into a season Mm -hmm. or two seasons. I don't know how many seasons it's getting. So like, well, I think they're probably trying to do a lot because they're not sure if they're going to get renewed. That's mm -hmm. what I'm guessing. Because the nice thing is, is that if it does take off, they don't have to just go with this series. There is a spinoff series. Yeah, there's the Bloodline series. And right? Yeah, the blo- yeah, which is really, I thought, really good. Um, and So I think they're setting up a world where they could do some really interesting things depending on how the show goes. I am liking it. Like some of some of it is a little odd, like yeah. some of the costuming choices. But overall, it's I'm good, having though. a pretty, it's like, pretty it's fun. good. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was, was a fun, fun. watch. Yeah. Um, I do think it's also interesting because this was a book written um, – what is the word when they write to a, a request in publishing? Oh, this really? Was it, was I, yeah. it was like, uh, not IP, but um, uh, I know what you're talking. I know what you're talking like, about. Oh, my God, my brain now. Is yeah, like, no, no, no. Um, I know what you're talking about, like where they have an idea and then it's written to that idea. Yeah. That is so interesting. I'm pretty sure that Vampire Academy was that. Huh. A packaged book. That's what it's called. It's called a packaged book. 
I'm pretty sure I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Vampire Academy was a package book. That is really interesting. Well, it also makes sense though, because that I mean, I'm not saying they don't happen now; they do. They do. But I but feel at the time like that timeline, that time period was big, big on packaged books. Like, well, a lot I think of big books. Were this that. would make a lot of sense for a packaged book at the time because you know what was big was vampires and boarding schools. I mean, it was mm -hmm. like the heyday still yeah. of Harry Potter and um, Twilight. And so I could definitely see why mm -hmm. this would be something people would be like, okay, this is going to do well. And Rochelle Mead had been writing adult paranormal romance. I think this is the first time she wrote YA. Yeah. So I'm pretty so, positive this was a package deal thing. That is so interesting. Is that right to script or something? no it's it's it like package? it's okay it's packet it, yeah okay. no they call it packaged like a packaged book where know, it's, i've heard different yeah. things so i, I mean like, yeah but um that that's very interesting i'm 99 sure like don't don't take me 100 <laughs> okay like, okay i'm 99 sure that i'd heard that this book series was uh, like one of those deals fair enough yeah um other things to talk about with this i'm trying to think because it's Oh, the um the specialization ceremony being televised was interesting because that was, oh, also yeah, that was funny. not a thing. Um and that Christian was helping her fake being mm -hmm. fire when she's not. I don't know. I th I, I just think there's really a lot. I just, I, there is. I do think we're getting um I curious at how much more we're getting about Christian and his parents being becoming Strigoi also. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah. So, I, like, I found that interesting as well. Well, and all of these assumptions about sort of, you know, Stroy are no longer human. They can't think. They can't reason. Mm -hmm. But then maybe that's not the case. So what really is going on? And I also think it's interesting that they sort of set themselves up as morally superior to the Stroy when mm -hmm. the royals are doing all of these terrible things themselves, which I think is part of the point. Yeah, I don't disagree. They, I mean, they want to be seen as better and more human-ish, -ish, I guess we would call it, than mm -hmm. the Strigoi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say, too, I like, I, I find Rose a lot more likable in the show, personally, mm -hmm, than in the book. I found her really irritating in the book. I mean, she still gets herself into trouble and is still headstrong and I think makes sense, but... I don't I don't know I just I like her better and the stuff with her mom is so interesting to me it is because clearly it's coming out of having been hurt but she's like I don't want to hear it I have no compassion but I think that's going to change I feel like at some point she's probably going to realize why her I, mom made I the think choices she did Rose in the show also benefits from like you're not getting the like cringy in her head stuff yes where it's like I'm you know, not like other girls. <laughs> I'm curvy and not thin like everyone else in this or that. And you're just like, mm, mm, do we need this? We don't need this. No. Yeah. Like the weird almost body checking happening and the like, yeah. which is weird. It's yeah. just weird. The yeah. book. And in the show, I feel like she's just headstrong. I which, am it's interesting though, right? Because on the one hand, for a book for the time that this book came out into like we were in early aughts where everything was about people being skinny 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 mm -hmm. which i unfortunately i think we're maybe heading back into something like that and so yeah. i could see the appeal or even benefit of having a character who is more curvy mm -hmm. as being really different but being that being important probably mm -hmm. representation when you weren't getting it at the time i mean for now it's like why is this what we're doing but yeah. I think for when it came out that was probably pushing back against yeah you know, and i don't disagree it just it was just interesting to re to go back and read something from yeah. that time period where it was very much like that was like fine it was more the like she was very much just like i'm not like everyone else and i was just like yes you are you're 16 <laughs> yeah. like you're a mess it's fine 
I do want more on her mom and the choices mm-hmm. that they make between like giving the kids up, but like also it sounds like the kids either way end up at the academy, and you're just like you're not really raising your own kids. Well, eventually, well, no, because she grew up with Lissa's family until she was old enough for the academy. So I think That's the difference true. is for the communes, they raise their kids until they're old enough to go to the academy. But how is that a good choice either? Mm-hmm. Given, and I don't think the book set it up in the same way. Um, like I want, I want to say, I don't think the communes are set up quite the same. Yeah, I don't either. Um, it's pretty horrifying, honestly, in the, in the show and all of the, you know, wanting, um, Lissa to get married to one of these people with her bloodline. Like there's so much, there's so much, it's four episodes and I'm like, there are so many. I, I, I mean, I feel like there's just there's so much that it's like almost we can, I mean we can't cover it all because there's too much no like they literally were like we're gonna throw spaghetti at the wall and it's all gonna st- <laughs> and uh we'll see if we close it all up by the end of the season oh man I am curious to see where it's gonna go though and I am enjoying it and I am liking it a lot better than the book because Agreed. I think they're doing a good job of getting rid of the, the things problems. I was most uncomfortable with Agreed. from the books no, they definitely have erased all the, the big problems from the book. So I'm good with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm, exci- I'm, I'm, I'm excited, I guess, really kind of to, yeah. to see where else it goes. No, same. I'm looking forward to it. Maybe once all the episodes are out, we could do a little, like, update somewhere. That would be good. I'd be down. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if we decide to read any more of the books, I guess we could. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it could be interesting. Other anything else? I feel like we have. We're. I think we're that's less, it. Yeah. Like I, I'm really. It was just kind of like stunned that I liked the show after mm-hmm. how much I didn't like the book. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I would probably have more to unpack if I had read more of the books. I wasn't expecting it to go much beyond book one, but clearly either. we probably should have read more of them because it's. Well, and then had we done that, this wouldn't have been the. case. Right, I would have been like, we covered book one in four episodes. Okay, I mean, I was concerned. I was like, how are we going to stretch book one over a season? Well, because nothing happens in book one. Exactly. <laughs> so that's that's what I was like, probably why they did terrible. it. Yeah, no, I I think they're making it much more interesting. They're aging it up. They're reaching a different audience, and I doing a lot more political stuff, which I appreciate. Um. Oh, I also kind of like the fact that we're not getting the whole plot line of Rose being addicted to having her blood consumed. Oh, yeah. By Lissa. Was, mm-hmm. Like, that was a little weird. So I kind of like that we just did away with that as a pl- plot thread. Yeah, agreed. I was happy to see that gone. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, well. I don't, I, otherwise, it was a fun time. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to watch the next episode when it drops. So. Same. Yeah. Hey, I mean, I got a year of peacock for this for like 20 bucks so i'm happy it's pretty good pretty good deal so yeah i guess we will make it a shorter than usual episode for this since i don't know that there's much else specifically to talk about with it but i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying it too i I, I don't know that i recommend the books i mean we'll see if we decide to go back yeah yeah and if we do maybe they get better maybe Um, but I don't know. I can't, you know, I can't guarantee it. Maybe just watch I, the show. It's a big sticking point for me, the relationship with Dimitri, because she's underage. Like, I just can't get past it in the books. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. I think that's my biggest problem. I'm like, it's gross. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, is this gross. is not hot. This is, this is gross. Agreed. Yeah. So, <laughs> yep. Um, so we're going to move into On My Radar, where we'll share recent or upcoming book releases and sci-fi fantasy and romance we're excited about. Um, the books I have for today's episode are being released between October 4th and October 17th, 2022. But Izzy, if you have anything in October, you are welcome to share it or anything, you know, recent. Okay. That works. This fall, I don't know what's going on in romance, but I feel like I'm in a drought for the fall, so... I have like Fair three enough. books on my list. It happens. It's okay. fine. I think I I don't have a lot actually for this either. I only have three and one of them is romance. So there's not a lot in this P 
period coming out but if y'all enjoy the podcast we would appreciate if you take a moment to rate and review us we can reach more listeners and if you want to get early access to episodes and exclusive bonus content that we do with every episode which is always fun consider supporting us on patreon and if you are not already subscribed to us over on youtube please do because we are trying to reach a thousand subscribers so we can get monetized and we are Mm -hmm. not too far off so um that would be wonderful and uh thank you so much to all of our supporting patrons you're making what we do possible okay so i have one from october 4th and two on october 11th okay mine's october 18th oh okay (laughs) good we don't have the same one day out of the range that's fine i'm glad we don't have the same romance (laughs) oh wait actually i have a second romance i need to you're good. I'm going to okay, pull okay, while, okay. you, while you talk right. about your first one. Okay. So my first one is Man Made Monsters by Andrea L. Rogers. This is a YA anthology of horror stories by an indigenous, I think, Cherokee author. And I it, I think it just looks interesting. I haven't read it yet, but I plan to read it. I have an advanced copy of it. So if you're looking for horror headed into spooky season and you want to try something from an indigenous author that's for a YA audience man-made monsters looks interesting very curious about that one yeah uh okay october 11th Mm -hmm. we have the player next door two can play this game it's a smart sexy fake dating rom-com don't love the smart thing but whatever uh this is about a tabletop game designer named Claire, and a finance bro named Logan, who live next door to each other. Well, that sounds fun. <laughs> it's like two ninety nine. Like, it just, it sounds cute. It's, you know, yeah, a fun illustrated, co- like, it actually is a fun illustrated cover. Um, so I just was like, oh, this sounds like a fun pairing. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Uh, October 11th, we're also getting On the Hustle by Adriana Herrera. Mm-hmm. So that is her latest book in her Dallas series. And I know we've talked about it. Someone talked about it on an early episode that we did. I just always love her books, so I'm going to pick it up. But I want to say this one has a guy who's like a former Olympic swimmer (laughs) as the hero. And I I don't remember the details, but it's probably going to be good. I can look them up. Um, But I'm I'm looking forward to that one. I should just find, find the details. Dating in Dallas series. That's right. And uh, I was like, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was right. So the hero is a former Olympic swimmer Mm -hmm. and the heir to a real estate empire. (laughs) And the heroine does bedroom makeovers for her friends. I remember being like the, um, her job was just like funny. Yeah. (laughs) Like I was like, I love I love a weird job and a romance. It's the yeah, best. It's like yeah. watching uh, House Hunters, you know, mm-hmm. in the weird jobs. And yeah. you're like, can you afford this? You yeah. sell umbrellas. No, I think it'll be, it'll, it should be good. What's your other one? Um, so I'm hesitantly excited. I do have an arc of this and I will be reading it ahead of time, most likely. Okay. Uh, for Partners in Crime by Alicia Rye. I say hesitantly because lately I have not loved her books as much as I have in the past. Mm-hmm. But this one is... Um, about a 35 year old accountant and a uh english teacher an english professor um hmm. and they like start dating i think to like cover up being single so their aunts stop interfering hold on oh funny that sounds fun i i really love her on tiktok she's so funny mm-hmm um she is very funny and her her and her fiance together oh my are, gosh, they're are adorable they're doing all their wedding yeah, stuff i think right there's now. like some Great. stuff that happens in like they have she ends up in vegas and like there may be crimes happening it sounds like um uh, cool. it's been a very mixed bag for my friends who have already read it which is why i'm hesitantly excited okay. i i have a particular alicia rise that i love um which are her like old her books her forbidden hearts uh-huh. and i'm just like I don't know. I'm hopeful. Yeah. I've read a few things from her and it's been hit and miss. So I don't know. Yeah. Because I really like her. And I like her writing generally, but I don't always like the execution. That's fair. We'll see what happens. Okay. What's your last one? My last one is The Spare Man by Mary Robinette Kowal. It's coming out October 11th. And this one is a sci-fi mystery 
set in a glittering high society. I think there's like a murder mystery. And I have liked other things I've read from Mary Robinette Qual. So I'm curious to see what this one is going to be like. And the cover is fun. It has very like, I don't know, 30s, 40s vibes to it sort of. But in space. I like that idea. Okay. <laughs> so, so we'll see. So that's 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 mine. I feel like there's not much coming out right in this period. Yeah, I agree. We're in a so. we're in a weird drought of new books. Yeah, I think there's more that'll be like the following couple of weeks, mm-hmm. but things also just kind of trickle off as we get closer to the holidays because publishing Agreed. sort of shuts down and then everything relaunches in January. So we'll see. Yep. We'll, we'll see, see what we get. Yeah. So that is it. I will be back in two weeks with Liana to discuss The Trouble with Peace by Joe Abercrombie as we're keeping going with our uh, first law read along. So that'll be fun. Tune in for that. And this has been Chapter 3 Podcast. We're your hosts, Bethany and Izzy. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Chapter 3 Podcast. And you can also find us on our individual YouTube channels. And uh, the next episode will be available in two weeks. This This episode's bonus content will be available to patrons in the next few days. Thanks for listening.